the first statement in the main method in the code to your right instantiates a new object of the class named random that object will return a pseudo random number each time certain methods are called on the object so here's a question what is the purpose of or perhaps what is meant by seeding the random number generator the value passed as a parameter to the random constructor on the right of your screen represents the current time in milliseconds relative to a specific time in history passing a value to the constructor for the random class is commonly known as seeding the generator the sequence of values returned by the random number generator is based on the value of the seed. Every different seed value causes a different sequence of random number values to be returned. Using the current time in milliseconds as the seed, guarantees that the sequence of pseudo-random values that are returned by the generator will be different each time the program is run. This is because the current time will be different each time the program is run and the random number generator will be seeded with a different value each time the program is run. The highlighted statement on the right of your screen calls the next int method on the random generator object to get and save the next value of type int in the pseudo random sequence so here's another question for you what is the consequence of casting the random value to type byte in the code on the right of your screen? The answer is that this casting the int value to type byte discards all but the eight least significant bits of the int value. When the 8-bit value is stored in the variable named random number on the right of your screen, which is of type int, the sign of the byte is extended through the most significant 24 bits and it becomes a value of type int that is guaranteed to be of relatively small magnitude. An object of the random class does not contain a method named get next byte or next byte in the same sense that it contains a method named next int. In this case, I cast the random int value to type byte simply to cause the values that are displayed by the program to be smaller and easier to compare visually. In other words, I cast the random int value to type byte and turned it into a random int value of small magnitude simply for my visual convenience.
the expression that is highlighted on the right of your screen instantiates a new object of the class name prob04 my class the random value that was obtained earlier is passed as a parameter to the class constructor at this point I will put the explanation of the class name prob04 on temporary temporary hold while I explain the class name prob04 my class the definition for that class begins in the code now showing on the right of your screen here is another question for you we know that the class named prob04 my class extends the class named prob04 which is an abstract class what does that tell us that we must do as a result of extending an abstract class or what do we know that we must do as a result of extending an abstract class because the class named prob04 my class extends the class named prob04 which is an abstract class we must either override the inherited abstract method named get data that was declared in the class named prob04 or we must declare the new class named prob04 my class to also be abstract as you can see on the right of your screen the class named prob04 my class is not declared abstract since this class isn't declared abstract we can probably conclude that it does override the inherited abstract method named get data we will see more about this later so here is another question what is the initial value contained in the variable named data on the right of your screen the class definition on the right of your screen begins by declaring a private instance variable of type int named data that code on the right of your screen does not initialize the instance variable named data when it is declared therefore the value of the instance variable named data is automatically initialized to the default int initialization value of zero then the code on the right of your screen defines the constructor for the class the first two statements in the constructor are simply print statements that cause text information to be displayed on the command line screen however the third line of code in the constructor stores the incoming value of the instance variable 
named, excuse me, the third statement in the constructor on the right of your screen saves the incoming parameter value in the instance variable named data. When it does that, it overwrites the default value of zero that was previously there. The last statement in the constructor on the right of your screen is more in keeping with the intended usage of a constructor than are the first two statements. The primary or intended purpose of a constructor is to assist in the initialization of the state of the object which depends on the values stored in its variables. Continuing with the code in the definition of the class named prob04 my class listing 3 on the bottom right of your screen shows the get data method that overrides the inherited abstract version of the get data method to recap the method named get data is declared as an abstract method in the abstract class name prob04 and is inherited into the subclass name prob04 my class.